Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at a proof that you'll encounter in a modern algebra class. The proof is Cayley's theorem, which states that every group is isomorphic to a group of permutations. Now, when you, when you come to this proof in your textbook, um, the proof that follows in that book is rather difficult for most students to go through and, and understand what it's trying to state and what it's actually saying. So in this video, we're not going to go through the proof word by word, but we're going to try to explain what the proof is actually trying to do. So, Cayley's theorem. We want to show that every group is isomorphic to a subgroup of the symmetric group. Now, to follow this explanation that we're going to go through, we will assume that you have been studying group theory and have a bit of a foundation built up there. Now, we're going to let our group G um, be a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, all the way out to a sub n. And basically, we're going to line them up in some arbitrary order, which I've done here. 1 is associated with a1, 2 is associated with a2, and so forth. So essentially, we take some finite group, and we're going to line them up in some arbitrary order. Now, for some element x from the group, so I'm going to specifically take an element from our group and operate each element uh, of that group by x from the left. For example, here was a sub 1. I'm going to operate it from the left by this fixed element x. And I'll operate a sub 2 by that same element, and so forth. So what we're doing here, then, is each operation gives a unique element of G, because, of course, in a group, all operations, we have closure. This essentially rearranges the elements of G. Thus, every X that we choose is really just a rearrangement of that order that I started out with. Our function, which quite often sometimes they use lambda for this particular proof, lambda sub x, okay, this is our how we're denoting our function using x, sends g to itself for some element g that I chose and kept fixed. And this defines a specific reordering of our group. And of course, if we talk about a reordering of our group, that is a specific permutation. Thus, we associate each element x with a specific permutation. And really, this idea then is the basis of what they're trying to show you that they're doing in that proof in your textbook. Now, if we want to take a look at an example of this working, let's let our group be z sub 4, okay? This would be the integers 0, 1, 2, and 3 with the operation of addition. So let's say I line them up in this specific order, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Lambda sub 0 would be associated with taking 0 and operating with each element from the group. And of course we know because the operation is addition, 0 is the identity element, it would not change the order. So 0 is associated, therefore, with the identity permutation. Lambda sub 1. Well, I would take 1 and add it to 0 and get 1. 1 added to 1 is 2. 1 added to 2 is 3. 1 added to 3 is actually 4, but 4 in mod 4 is 0. So again, lambda sub 1 is associated with this permutation. And likewise, for lambda 2 and lambda 3. So basically, every element that I choose, okay, each row here represents a permutation in S4, the symmetric group S4. For example, lambda sub 3. Notice this was the row, took my original arrangement and gave me this arrangement, so notice we have a specific permutation associated with 3. Okay, we could write it like this, or we could write them as cycles. Okay, 
So therefore, notice that G had four elements, and our subgroup of S4 has four elements, which are permutations. So hopefully looking at this example um, and maybe thinking about this will make it a little bit easier to read through the proof that's in your particular book. So I will uh, see you next time.